let's be honest, racing your bike is not cheap. When you think about things like race entry fees, traveling to the event, you're probably taking some time off work as well. One should be pretty committed when it comes to signing up, throwing ourselves in the deep end. So why is it the riders go through all that preparation to get to the start line, but they don't make sure their bike's running in tip top shape? My guess is they just don't know where to start confidently. Very few riders in the world have a professional mechanic that's gonna take care of all those pre-race day worries as far as the bike's concerned, but we're our own mechanics, so we've got ourselves. Later on, I do wanna go over a couple of race day enduro tips, but for now, let's just focus on the bike because if this thing's dialed, that's one less headache for you, and you can focus your attention elsewhere. Even if you aren't racing your first or 50th enduro here, these tips and preparation are really beneficial to everyday riders. Think about that next big bike trip you're going on or all day adventure. Consider a couple of these tips to help prep you for your ride because they definitely cross over. First and foremost, this should go without saying, but I'm gonna reiterate it even for myself because it's that important, and that is start with a clean bike. This is gonna make the rest of the service go that much smoother and possibly in the cleaning process, you might've noticed some parts that need a little extra attention. I like to start by cleaning the frame and the wheels. I just use some simple biodegradable soapy water works wonders for me, but make sure to dry it after with a clean towel. When you're going deep on cleaning that drivetrain, I like to use a little degreaser agent. It's gonna help break it down, get the cassette looking nice and fresh and shifting like a dream. After that, I like to finish with a fresh layer of chain lube to really seal the deal, but don't forget to wipe off the excess when you're done. Bike is clean and polished. Time to get to the nitty gritty, the servicing part. Now, personally, I like to do this the day before my race, assuming I've just had practice and I've got one day to just rest up before racing, lots of time to check the bike over. But if you're planning on bringing it to your local bike shop to have the service done there, make sure you book it in with plenty enough time. Could take a couple of days to get it back, so you don't wanna be rushing around morning of the race. While it isn't necessary to throw on new components and fresh rubber every single race weekend, it's really important to be cognizant of how your parts are wearing and when you service them last. Like just a simple fork lower service can make a huge difference on how your bike feels out on the track. So this kind of stuff can be done pretty easily as a home mechanic if you have the right tools. But before we get too deep, start with a bolt check. I like to bolt check every single thing on the bike, bring it back to the torque spec. That way, stage one, you can descend with confidence. This next tip is easily overlooked. Even I sometimes forget, but don't forget to check your spoke tension on your wheels. If anything's loose there, you're gonna wanna make sure to tighten it up, get it back as straight as possible, because sometimes, believe it or not, little things like loose spokes can in fact lead to a flat tire later on in a race run. Next up, we're gonna run through all the gears, checking every single one, make sure it's shifting like a dream. Little pro tip from Tom Bradshaw himself, he says, take the bike out onto some flat ground when you think it's shifting nice, throw in a couple of sprinting start gates because if you're gonna drop a chain or slip a pedal, it's always gonna happen right when you descend into a stage. Something I really, really love on race day is a freshly serviced fork. Now you don't have to take this thing fully apart and do a full rebuild on it, but even just changing the oil in the lowers, it's gonna feel really nice, clean it all up, it's gonna feel a lot better on your hands over an eight hour race day. And if you're not comfortable doing that, then definitely take it to your local bike shop because trust me, it's gonna make a big difference. Even if you don't send your fork in to get service or you don't do it yourself at home, still double check your pressures just to make sure you haven't lost any air since your last ride. We're heading out there for what could be a six to eight hour bike ride, racing, descending. So it's really important to check your brake pads. Now, personally, I don't actually love to put new brake pads in every single race day because it takes a little bit of time to bed them in properly and it's a bit of a mind game. You drop into stage one and your brakes aren't bed in properly, it's gonna be a bad rest of the day. So what I do instead is just make sure I've got enough meat on the pads, the rotor's in good condition, give them a little cleanup, and then just put them back in. If you do go ahead and decide to throw in new brake pads, chances are you're gonna have to push those pistons back out in the caliper so you probably wanna do a full bleed on the whole system, 
get some fresh oil in there. However, for me, I'm not gonna do that today because I know I've got enough meat on my brake pads. So I'm gonna clean those up, put them back in, and then on these brakes, I can actually just bleed the lever and get rid of those few extra bubbles. Keeps it really simple for me. Something that's not in my everyday service ritual, but definitely for race time, is to check the frame bearings. Now, a few gunked up frame bearings or even ones that are fully locked, you can't spin, that could be the reason for some odd feelings on the bike or those noises that you just can't pin down. They're also really crucial to help with suspension working on your bike and just how your bike feels overall. So it's worth checking those, making sure they're moving super freely. Now, when it comes to tires, really fresh, good grip is gonna make a big difference. It gives me a ton of confidence going fast and cornering with speed. Even if you only keep one set of freshish tires throughout the whole race season, only throw them on for your race laps, it's really gonna make a big difference over old, bald tires. If you put these fresh tires on last night or if you're in a different location than you're used to, it's not uncommon to lose a little air pressure in your tires, especially if you're going for a tubeless setup overnight. So therefore, in the morning, bring the pressure gauge out and just double check where you're at. Just a little bonus topic, but I do think it's worth considering is your tire casing. Now for me personally, I always go for that kind of mid to heavier casing because I hate flat tires. Touch wood, haven't had one in quite some time, but on race day, it's pretty common to be a little bit fatigued. You're not taking the smoothest lines. You're probably riding harder than you usually do out on a practice lap. So might be a good idea to spring up in the tire casing just to cover your butt come race day. Do bear in mind though, if you're used to running really thin, more cross country type tires, and you slap on a big downhill one, you're gonna notice the difference. It's gonna be a little bit heavier feeling, a little bit slower rolling. So maybe practice this a couple days before your race so you're not totally thrown off. Final little hits, we are almost ready to line up and go racing, but first, I like to put everything on my bike that I'm gonna need for the race day the night before. So that way I'm not running around in the morning looking for zip ties for my number plate, uh, side cutters to cut the zip ties. And as for what I carry on my bike, well, I've got the usual suspects. I like to obviously carry a pump and a tube if there's any issues out on course. On my pump, I actually have a little bit of spare tape and zip ties should I have any mechanical or need to help a friend. I've got my multi-tool so I can tighten up anything as needed on the course. Also in the EDC tool, I pack my tire plugs. Those are gonna be really helpful if I get a little puncture out in the stages while I'm racing. Hopefully I can get to the bottom of the stage and then put in a tube and take it from there. But in the heat of the moment, you just wanna shove a plug in there and keep racing. Obviously we've got a full water bottle on the bike, ready to go. But one little thing I do carry with me on race day that I pretty much never ride with otherwise is a CO2 cartridge. Because if you do get a flat mid stage and you need to pump it up and keep going, it's gonna save you so much time versus the hand pump. Have a little CO2 cartridge ready to go. And finally, are you really enduroing without some enduro fruit on your bike? I mean, I'm not partial to bananas myself. They get a bit yucky and brown after that first climb, but a nice orange at the top of stage one, a little hydration, it's good stuff. Make sure to spend some quality time with your race rig here before the race day comes and hopefully it's gonna treat you nice out there. Thanks for watching and hearing about my pre-race bike check. Soon enough, we're gonna share some information on getting to the start line and making the most out of your first enduro race or your second or your 30th. And heck, even if you're not racing and you're just going out for a big adventure ride, all these tips are gonna make sure you have some fun out there and everything goes smoothly. Let me know what I missed in your list of rituals for race day because I'm sure there's something I can add to my own. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because you don't wanna miss any enduro race action.